and uh, welcome everybody. So yeah, my name is Shamal Metalia. I work in the product development team uh, at Illumina and I focus on our informatic uh, platforms and primarily uh, Dragon. Um, I look forward to uh, these webinars every few months as we put out new releases. Uh, it gives an opportunity uh, to showcase what the development teams uh, are doing. So uh, appreciate that opportunity to uh, present uh, to our users. Um, as uh, many of you uh, have been using Dragon in the past, uh, you are aware of you know, uh, the releases that we put out and uh, you know, we include a number of new features, improvements, new pipelines. So uh, with that in mind, we continue to do the same uh, with this version. So we have a lot of uh, slides and information that we have put together for this uh, release, and we won't be able to cover everything, but what we have done is we have put everything into slides uh, so that uh, you know, when you uh, go back uh, from this webinar, you'll be able to uh, get a lot more information than what we'll be able to cover in the uh, time that we have. And uh, of course, you know, we are always available for feedback and any questions that you may have that we may not be able to cover today. Uh, during the webinar, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and uh, ask those. So uh, with that in mind, uh, let's uh, review uh, all the updates that we have made in this uh, release. Uh, and, uh, um, and then towards the end, we can uh, get some time to answer questions. Okay, so I'm moving my slides. I hope uh, that you see it at your end. Uh, and there might be a little bit of a lag, but uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's refreshing uh, on your side. So, uh, really, uh, on this slide, what we are trying to do is give you just a quick overview of the m major updates that we have made uh, in this release. And definitely the one uh, that stands out and is our uh, first uh, version of uh, a single cell uh, RNA uh, pipeline. So we'll be talking a little bit in detail in the subsequent slides, but this is really, I would say, one of the most exciting things that we have done in this release. Uh, it's a first version. And we, uh, you know, as we do with all our pipelines, we'll be working towards uh, making more improvements in subsequent releases. The other feature that really has been asked of us, uh, you know, from many users in the pharmacogenomics space uh, is the ability to uh, do CYP2D6 uh, genotyping. And, uh, you know, this again uh, is something that we are uh, proud to integrate into our solution, make it easier for customers uh, and users to run uh, this type of genotyping in addition to the other analysis that they're doing on their uh, whole genome uh, samples. Uh, as always, we are uh, trying to improve uh, our existing pipelines. So, uh, you know, we will talk about improvements we have done in the germline uh, and the somatic uh, pipelines. Uh, and then uh, from our previous uh, version, uh, we are expanding on our uh, UMI support for, uh, you know, uh, specific panels uh, and uh, when we call full UMI support, we'll talk about what that means, but really this builds upon, uh, you know, what we have been working on our internal Illumina assays over the last year, uh, and then how are we expanding that scope to third party assays. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit more detail about what's in the single cell RNA pipeline. Um, so at a high level, uh, with uh, everything that we do on Dragon, we try to uh, improve the speed uh, of the analysis uh, that we do. So definitely we can uh, we leverage that uh, capability that we have on our platform, but also keeping an eye on the accuracy uh, of the data and uh, you know the ability to produce uh, uh, a cell by gene uh, expression matrix uh, as part of the uh, pipeline. So in terms of the speed, uh, if you think about a sample with about 8,000 cells, uh, and a billion reads, uh, the analysis uh, using the Dragon pipeline uh, in our benchmarking is about 40 minutes uh, today, which is, uh, and we have some comparison uh, in subsequent slides, but we think that that's uh, pretty fast today. And then, of course, uh, in future releases, we'll continue to look for areas in which we can make that faster. Uh, there is wide compatibility, and what we mean by that is we're supporting multiple library types, uh, you know, that you might have. So uh, that's something that we have kept an eye on. And uh, also, uh, you know, with everything that we do on the platform, we try to do as much integration uh, to make the workflow efficient. So uh, when we say it's efficient, we are talking about, you know, you going from BCL to a quantified expression 
uh, with a single tool uh, and with just a couple of command lines uh, and uh, in, in a more integrated manner. So that's kind of the high level uh, you know, vision in terms of putting together this pipeline. Uh, just an overview of the workflow that you know uh, users would uh, typically do with uh, a single cell uh, pipeline is uh, you have the uh, library prep uh, and then again you know various uh, you know uh, library prep options are available there are flexible uh, UMI definitions uh, that are out there and then uh, the multiple input types that go with that uh, the next step is uh, really your sequencing uh flow uh from there and again just going back uh, one step on, on on the on the library prep uh when we said that we supported uh, a variety of library types this is an, uh, some examples of you know what we have uh tested uh, against so you have the 10x uh chromium uh single cell uh workflow which is really one of the more commonly used but we have also uh tested with uh you know other other library uh, types out there uh, like the drop seek uh, and in drop and others uh, so so a, a variety of uh, you know library prep types are already supported on the platform today uh, and then of course you know you go through your sequencing flow and then you can use uh, multiple sequences but there's a reason uh, you know we uh, put the next seek 2000 which is our newest sequencer over there and we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, and then finally uh, the secondary analysis uh, portion where uh, dragon comes in right so uh, we are supporting the workflow, as we said, from a BCL all the way to a cell by gene uh, expression matrix. So the steps that you you know have in between are you know the demultiplexing, you know, which if you're running Dragon uh, BCL conversion, that uh, you're familiar with, that's uh, included or that's supported uh, for this workflow. Uh, and then uh, you have your barcode and the error correction uh, for your uh, UMI uh, for your uh, single cell samples. Again. Uh, steps for uh, alignment and realignment uh, as necessary. Uh, and then any UMI error correction uh, that needs to happen is part of the workflow. Uh, and then finally, a generation uh, you know, of uh, a cell by gene expression matrix. And with that, uh, there are options to do uh, any data set filtering. And with uh, other Dragon pipelines like we generate QC files, you get a bunch of QC metrics uh, that come out of the pipeline. So a, a, a fairly standard uh, workflow, but what we have done is we have leveraged our RNA aligner, uh, you know, which you are aware of, which does, uh, you know, uh, whole genome uh, based uh, mapping uh, as against this camera. So it, it, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, efficient to run that. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we have leveraged our expertise from uh, the UMI side in terms of its error correction, error coding, uh, you know, uh, capability. So uh, it's all packaged into a single uh, command line workflow that you can run uh, from your fast queue to generation of this uh, cell by gene uh, expression matrix. Um, and then uh, one of the things that is important as part of a uh, uh, a single cell pipeline is the visualization and downstream analysis. So uh, we have uh, put together uh, some visualization tools uh, that could, uh, you know, benefit, uh, you know, in terms of uh, addressing, you know, how the quality of the data is, how the clustering looks, uh, and other metrics. So, so these are also uh, built into uh, the pipeline today. At the same time, the output files that we generate, for example, the expression matrix and others are compatible with third party tools so if you are uh, you know used to using uh, scanpy or surat or other of those tools uh, then uh, you have a compatibility uh, with those tools as well uh, what we have done is we have done some uh, benchmarking and what we have used as a benchmarking tool is the uh, you know widely available open source tool called star solo so if you're familiar with that uh, you know uh, you should be able to see that the results that uh, Dragon put out are uh, extremely close uh, to that. So here are some uh, plots just uh, showing the correlation and uh, the distribution and the cell overlap uh, that we have done uh, with uh, Star Solo. Uh, here is uh, a clustering uh, a map essentially that we have used ScanPy and we have used a human 
EBMC samples uh, here. And again, you can see that uh, between Dragon and Star Solo, it, it's, it's really identical. And uh, you know, the clustering and everything looks uh, very close to each other. Here is uh, a speed comparison uh, that we have done uh, with Star Solo. So uh, you can see that we have taken uh, a sample with about 8,000 cells and about 1.4 billion reads. And both are run on the same hardware, except uh, that Dragon, uh, in addition, uses uh, the SPGA. So the hardware that we use is a 24-core machine. So if you were to run Star Solo, uh, versus Dragon on that. Uh, Dragon uh, uses the SPGA accelerator and it's about uh, three to four times uh, faster uh, than running Star Solo. So just uh, to uh, recap in terms of uh, what the availability is and what the features are across the various platforms uh, where Dragon, uh, the single cell pipeline exists. So uh, the if you have a Dragon uh, on-site server, uh, you can access the pipeline today. The software is available for download. What it does not include today uh, as part of uh, the on-site offering is it does not have the HTML reports and metrics and visualization. What I mean to say by metrics is you have the metrics in raw form, but they are not plotted or they don't have those visualizations uh, that we were showing. However, if you have a NextSeq system, uh, the NextSeq system also includes now the Dragon single cell pipeline. So if you're aware that Dragon is on board on the NextSeq platform. And if you run a single cell uh, pipeline using NextSeq uh, 2000, then you also get the visualization and the HTML reports and others. So essentially, you can have a single cell workflow uh, run on the sequencer, and what you get at the end is a full HTML report with all the uh, you know, analysis and visualization and everything. So it, it's super efficient if you are in uh, that space and you're using the next week to do single cell analysis. I think uh, this will be a really uh, efficient uh, way to run an end-to-end -end, uh, workflow that we envision that, you know, customers can benefit from. Uh, in terms of uh, base space, uh, we don't have any apps available yet, but that's something in the world. Uh, and then again, going back to the Dragon server, uh, we understand that for single cell having visualization and those uh, you know metrics in a in a, in a more uh, you know published report is important. So we are looking at ways in which we could include a tools package that could provide some of that uh, in a future version. But at least the raw data is there, which you can then uh, pipe into something downstream to uh, address. Okay, so. Um, I, I hope uh, that you're seeing the right slide. I'm just getting some messages, but I just want to confirm that I'm on slide 12. And I'll be moving to the next slide, uh, uh, which is uh, slide 13. So the next topic that we are going to uh, discuss is uh, the sit 2 d 6 uh, genotyper. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. So as uh, you know, uh, most of you are aware that the sit 2 d 6 gene is responsible uh, for the metabolism of a large number of uh, drugs that are out there. So again, in the, our customers in the pharmacogenomic space really uh, you know, want to uh, address uh, genotyping uh, of this gene. So this was something uh, that was requested from a number of our customers, and uh, it, it, it's really uh, great to see that we've been able to include this into this version. And again, the, the challenges, uh, as you might be aware, with CPD6 is that um, it, it has a variety of SNDs and uh, SVs that are present there, but also there is uh, the pseudogene, which is a CPD7, uh, with uh, you know uh, homologous regions uh, that are in those genes. So uh, having, so using our existing standard traditional uh, pipeline tools uh, are not sufficient to address genotyping for this gene. So as we are building more capability into making targeted callers. For example, we have one for SMN1, SMN2. Uh, this kind of falls into that bucket where we are addressing which of these uh, you know, genes would be more suitable to build more targeted callers, and that's where the CIP2D6 uh, tool comes in uh, specifically to address that. So the tool uh, that we have uh, used is uh, basically derived from 
you know, a, a group which is led by Mike Everly here at Illumina, and the tool is called Sirius. So we have worked closely with them uh, to uh, integrate uh, this capability into Dragon. So it's based off Sirius. If you're aware, there is a paper out there uh, recently on this tool. Um, it outputs uh, all the star alley uh, diplotypes. So about 120 uh, uh, star alleles are supported uh, with uh, this capability. Uh, we have support for uh, various uh, reference genomes for this. Uh, it requires you to run a germline whole genome data, so not exome. Uh, and then it supports uh, in Dragon with its full integration. So you know it runs with Mapper. Uh, you know, so if you have FASTQ files, or if you have pre-aligned BAM or CRAM files, you can still uh, utilize the tool. And then the the nice part is it runs in parallel with other components in your standard germline uh, analysis workflow. So if you have a whole genome sample, if you are running small variants, uh, structural variants, CMV, expansion hunter, you can just turn on the switch and say, okay, you know, uh, run the cip 2 d 6 uh, genotyper uh, as part of uh, that run. So it, it, it's, fairly, it's, it's super efficient, fairly easy to use. You don't have to go and run a separate tool. Uh, it's all uh, inbuilt. Uh, what we did was, of course, we uh, we made sure that uh, you know the the integration uh, of the tool is uh, is good and everything works. So we basically reran uh, all the benchmarking that Sirius uh, had run, uh, and then of course we also compared with some other tools that are out there. Uh, but as you can see here, that uh, uh, the the results and the data uh, matches up uh, perfectly uh, with uh, what's in 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 Sirius. And uh, we will be uh, working closely with uh, that team again uh, and seeing if they have any updates that we can uh, then uh, include in our subsequent release. Okay. Um, so moving on to uh, the third big uh, update of, uh, on this release is the accuracy uh, improvements. So let's first uh, talk about the germline uh, small variant calling accuracy improvement. So just a little bit of a background. So in uh, the summer of this year, there was a precision FDA challenge uh, regarding uh, the uh, genome in a bottle uh, sample. Basically, the HG002, 3, and 4, where there were new truth sets uh, that were uh, released. And as part of the challenge, uh, the, the, the precision FDA group uh, put out those samples and asked everybody to submit uh, you know, there are uh, uh, the improvements to be able to address uh, that new truth set, uh, which essentially is an extension of the earlier truth set in about 7% more of the genome. So I'll mention, I'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. But uh, to, to address that, there were a couple of improvements that the Dragon team did, uh, which led to them uh, winning uh, that challenge. And there are two major ones. So uh, I'll talk about that right now. The first one is what we call as a joint detection of overlapping variants. And again, this is on a single sample basis, so not to be confused with a joint genotyping or you know the joint workflow that we have towards the end of any doing a coordinate. But this is simply uh, an accuracy boost which uh, affects or which improves our indel calling. Um, and with this new feature, uh, we can detect indels. Uh, in overlapping SNPs or indels that are near each other or indels near SCRs much better than what we could do before. So that gave us a big boost in accuracy. In this release, uh, we observed that there is a little runtime hit when we enable this. So we have disabled it by default, but really if you you can uh, take in that small runtime hit, which is not very significant, but we still felt that you know uh, it's significant for <laughs> our standards. Uh, you can turn this on, uh, you know, at the command line. So the feature is there, but it's just not enabled by default. The other update that we did as part of uh, that Precision FDA challenge is we uh, enabled the capability of the graph genome within our mapper. That capability always existed, but we just didn't, uh, you know, exploit it uh, enough. And then this Precision FDA challenge made us go and look into that. And what that did was, as the challenge said, uh, that the problem is uh, difficult to map regions, we saw a significant accuracy boost uh, because of having a graph genome versus a linear genome. 
And we created this graph genome by leveraging population haplotypes. And with that, uh, and the capability that already existed, we were able to see that boost. And what is more significant as part of that is the gains that we are uh, observing from this is in about 193 medically relevant genes. So the original truth set did cover that, but now we have a wider uh, set of genes that are now uh, better, that are capable of better mapping with this improvement. And the impact of that is those genes, if we were making calls earlier, those calls may not have been uh, you know, that reliable. But with this, you can trust some of the calls that we're making and you do not maybe need to do any orthogonal uh, validation. So, so this is a huge uh, benefit out of this precision FDA challenge, which I think will uh, help the community a lot by utilizing uh, the Illumina reads uh, in those regions. So here is a little bit of what the challenge was. So if you are familiar with the genome in the bottle truth set, the original version was at 3.3.2, and it covered about 85% of the genome. The new truth set increased it to about 92%. So it's about 7% increase, and that is where those difficult to map regions uh, come in. And with the improvements uh, that we made uh, in that challenge, and the challenge had about 25 other uh, 20 to 25 other groups that submitted uh, their analysis results. And you can see that uh, Dragon is about 20 to 30% better in not only the difficult to map regions that they had expanded to, but also in terms of the overall uh, benchmarking. So you can see the FP plus FN count over here uh, compared to the other submissions uh, that had happened as part of the region. And this was during the summertime, so what we did was we worked towards integrating it in 3.7, so now this capability is available to all of our users to uh, take care of. The one thing that I would um, mention here is the graph genome capability today is uh, uh, for the HG38 genome, uh, but we are working towards making a GRCH37, HG19 uh, version uh, that we will uh, make available to everybody. Um, and on top of the graph genome, what I mentioned about joint detection, what they refer to as JD here, uh, you can see that we did some benchmarking, uh, and this is just some average uh, values that we are showing over here. Uh, and we can see the improvements on not only whole genomes, but even whole exomes. And you can see that with joint detection, and if I focus more on the index, the FP plus SN count on an average is down by 13%. And again, a significant uh, drop in that count, even uh, for uh, whole exomes. And here at the bottom, maybe slightly small to see, but you can see how Dragon, uh, uh, you know, performs for these data sets. These are again standard uh, genome in a bottle samples, uh, you know, across various uh, sequencers, across various references. Uh, you can see in red is where we turned on the joint detection uh, capability with 3.7. And uh, overall, you can see a significant uh, improvement, not only in SNPs, but uh, a bigger uh, update uh, in accuracy on the index set. So, so really, uh, I think uh, this is something that uh, we feel that will help uh, anybody who's running a small data calls. Okay, so this is just, uh, uh, I would say a summary of uh, what the graph genome does. It, it, it resolves the regions of the genome that were previously not accessible uh, from Illumina reads. Just due to repeat sequences or just the mapping is uh, difficult there and the graph genome helps us resolve that. Uh, we can increase the coverage into you know, uh, relevant genes uh, that were difficult to call before. Uh, as I said, we are compatible today with existing AG38, uh, uh, but we will be uh, making available, uh, you know, the same uh, kind of a graph genome for GRCH37. Uh, and then uh, while we have already, uh, you know, demonstrated how it performs for small variants, we are looking into the impact of this for structural variants and SNPs. Okay. Um, then uh, moving on to the somatic accuracy improvements, uh, you know, the 
a number of improvements, but I would talk about the one that is significant in this release is uh, something that we had on our uh, you know, to-do list for a while. We had done a lot of improvements in the tumor normal uh, space, but the tumor only uh, accuracy was uh, you know, uh, lagging in our, in our opinion. So there is a significant accuracy boost uh, specifically to the tumor uh, only uh, pipeline set. And I have data uh, for whole genomes and whole exomes uh, to show that. Uh, we also uh, have support for SV calling uh, for UMI libraries. Uh, in 3.5, if you remember, we introduced uh, support for uh, liquid tumor uh, data. So again, this is you know uh, samples where you have tumor in normal uh, contamination, and you know how do you resolve that, and how do you improve the accuracy when you know either your um, uh, you know the quality of your tumor data is uh, is not good. Uh, versus if there is high contamination in the normal. So we have made some improvements there and I have slides uh, to show that. Uh, and then again, to address the, uh, the issue with high FP or false positive rate for tumor only, uh, we have an improved uh, noise filtering uh, mechanism. So this is where you can build a, a panel of normals uh, that uh, helps you uh, filter out any false positives uh, in these pipelines. Uh, and again, uh, with all of this, we have improved some efficiency in how we run uh, some of these uh, uh, somatic-based uh, uh, pipeline systems. So if you compare what we had in 3.6, our genotyping approach uh, was uh, more like the Mutec 2 uh, you know, uh, tool that you might be familiar with. Uh, in 3.7, uh, we are moving a little bit and gaining from uh, the team that had worked on Strelka to improve the genotyping in this space. And also what we did was we had done some improvements in the tumor normal uh, you know, analysis uh, using that, but we now ported that over to the tumor only uh, space. So, so that was something that uh, we had not done in the previous releases. And with the improvements that we have done on the noise filtering uh, and how we treat non-informative reads and how we filter those, uh, we see a significant uh, improvement in our uh, false positive uh, detection. So here is some uh, benchmarking uh, that we uh, performed. And again, these are, uh, you know, the cell lines, the HCC uh, uh, cell lines that, you know, uh, you might be familiar with. And we did the benchmarking for tumor-only uh, data from these samples. And you can see uh, in 3.6, our FP plus SN count, versus now moving to uh, 3.7, we can see a very big reduction uh, in that. And this is for SNPs, and a similar uh, improvement, is, uh, improvement is what we have seen in Indels. And again, majority of that is attributed to our FP uh, rate. So it's about five times reduced, and we are still maintaining uh, the sensitivity to over 95%. Uh, here is similar data, but uh, in the whole genome uh, space. And uh, in this, uh, you can see the comparison uh, where Dragon uh, 3.7 in green is without a systematic noise file. And then when you introduce a systematic noise file, uh, you know, then uh, the, the FB plus FN count drops even further. So this is a major improvement uh, for those running uh, tumor-only uh, samples. And similar, uh, you know, profile of uh, accuracy improvements that you'll observe even on the uh, Indel side. Again, these are uh, various, uh, you know, uh, publicly available samples that we have uh, run internally to kind of, uh, you know, demonstrate uh, on how it is uh, performing. Um, this is a, uh, a slide on, you know, what I mentioned about uh, liquid tumor uh, improvement and. Uh, what we have here is, again, FP plus FN for a range of tumor purities. Uh, so you can see that we start at purity of 80%, going down to purity of 20%. And then we are also looking at various contamination levels, so what we refer to as tumor in normal contamination. So you can see that the contamination uh, goes from 5% all the way to 20%. So this is just showing you, uh, you know, that profile of various uh, uh, purities and contamination and how uh, Dragon, uh, you know, uh, improves from 3.6 uh, to 3.7.
Okay. Uh, moving on to the next uh, big update uh, that we have. So uh, this is talking about the full UMI support. And what we mean by full UMI support here is now we have a universal collapser for all UMI designs. So you can bring in uh, any UMI uh, that exists. So it could be non-random dual UMI. This is similar to what uh, we use in our TSO 500 essay, what we call as a true site UMI. So that we had built in support from our previous uh, releases, but now we support random single UMIs and we also support random dual UMIs. Essentially, you can bring in any UMI uh, types that exist out there and then we have a collapser uh, to able to generate a BAM file from any of those. Uh, in addition to that, uh, what we have done is, uh, not only do we support uh, these additional UMI types, but we have improved our uh, accuracy models, our collapsing models, and also how we, uh, you know, do a consensus generation of uh, reads uh, and also further error suppression. So things like detecting, uh, you know, UMI jumping, uh, you know, how we uh, do any family corrections uh, or, you know, how do we address unmatched UMIs. Uh, so multiple improvements uh, uh, have been done to uh, you know reduce the error rate uh, when we generate a, a read collapsed uh, bam out of uh, uh, the workflow so i have some uh, comparison data uh, to show on that again the the workflow uh, today to generate that read collapsed bam uh, is uh, you know at a high level fairly straightforward uh, you know you have your umi molecules from your sample you generate your raw reads. At the end of the day, you basically get consensus reads. And if you look at the right, uh, the workflow does two steps of alignment. So you do an alignment first. Uh, you do your family grouping. You do uh, a collection of you know, uh, the, the, the UMI estimation. And then you go through the steps of uh, consensus generation, UMI correction, and duplex correction. And then once you have the consensus uh, uh, file, you do another step of realignment at the end to give you a read collapsed uh, back. So this workflow had existed uh, in the previous version, but now you know you can bring in uh, you know any other uh, UMI types, uh, and uh, you know you have an improved uh, error correction uh, model uh, that is built into the workflow. Here is uh, some co uh, comparison uh, that we did. Uh, there are two uh, you know. Uh, uh, tables here. One is on the left is for a random simplex UMI, and on the right is a random duplex UMI. And we are showing you comparison here with 3.6. Uh, for the same data, you can see that the error rate has dropped on 3.7. And we have also done a comparison against a widely used third party tool for the same uh, data. So on Dragon, you can see that uh, the error rate is uh, lower than what we get on the third party. We have improved from 3.6, but also the runtime is uh, really fast uh, to compress some of, and some of these, uh, you know, uh, UMI samples have extremely large coverages. So, you know, we are crunching through a lot of reads uh, to finally generate that collapse BAM going through two steps of alignment. And with Dragon, you can do it really, really fast. So you can get a consensus read uh, realigned BAM, uh, you know, depending on the size, of samples, but the range that we have seen based on various testing we have done uh, on the simplex UMIs is between three to 25 minutes. Uh, on the duplex, uh, again, between 10 and 25 minutes. So much faster than you know what you would get from other widely used uh, tools that we have compared against. The big, uh, another big addition to the workflow is uh, previously we felt confident in terms of our bands that we were generating, but we hadn't invested enough time uh, to talk about the uh, you know structural uh, to talk about the variant calling. So in this uh, release, what we have done is we have also introduced a variant calling steps. So you can get small variant calls, uh, and then uh, we have validated uh, some of that uh, already, and we have some uh, data to show for that. But essentially, uh, you know, you can now take the UMI panel data all the way from uh, FastQ uh, to generate a somatic uh, VCF file. And again, uh, you know, just shows you that, uh, you know, in terms of uh, not only generating that VCF file, we have done uh, a number of, uh, you know, improvements to 
uh, you know, correct for any noise uh, in terms of, you know, calling those variants. And uh, of course, as we are looking at these UMI data, we are going to extremely low allele frequencies and we are uh, leveraging some of our knowledge from our TSO 500 assay uh, into bringing uh, capability into other uh, analysis for other UMI types. So, uh, you know, there is, uh, you know, sample specific, uh, you know, artifact removal, uh, you know, we take care of the animation, uh, you know, artifacts that exist in your sample. So a bunch of improvements which eventually lead to uh, better sensitivity uh, and, uh, and, and lower uh, FP plus FN. So here is a, a benchmarking data set uh, which we have done for a random dual UMI case. Again, we're using a third party tool uh, to uh, address this, but you can see with Dragon end to end, uh, we get some sensitivity on indels while the third party tool doesn't see anything. And even our S uh, uh, SNV sensitivity when you run the end to end pipeline is, is much improved and much higher. Um, and again, the runtime uh, for these samples is very, very fast. Uh, similar with a single uh, UMI workflow, in this case, we had used an Agilent uh, UMI uh, panel. Uh, and then again, you can see that uh, the, the tool that we had used, which is more widely used for analyzing this kind of data, uh, you know, uh, Dragon has a, a much improved sensitivity in this release than what we had before. And of course, we're now running an end-to-end -end workflow, which we didn't have uh, in the past. Um, moving on to the next section. So what we have done is we have, uh, you know, we realized that there were uh, somatic workflows which were not very well integrated. So, you know, if you were to run all the callers with somatic workflow, you had to do multiple steps. So we have addressed uh, some of those uh, you know, inefficiencies as we call it, uh, and also improved the support to ingest multiple uh, input types into running uh, the somatic workflows. And again, the benefit of this is you run everything in a single run and you reduce your overall analysis time and you simplify your uh, workflow. So maybe the table in the next slide uh, is a much more uh, better to understand. So if you have a tumor normal workflow, then today uh, we support all, uh, you know, combinations of analysis. So SNV, CNV, or, uh, you know, SV, SNV, things, all, all of these are supported today, uh, except the one that we don't support today is if you have BAMs and if you want to remap and realign them. So that workflow as a single step is not supported. If you want to remap and realign, you, do it as one step and then the next step you do the callers. But if you start from uh, FASTQ, uh, then you are able to run all the pipelines uh, as a single workflow. If you have tumor only uh, samples, then everything is supported now. So you can take your tumor only pipeline, uh, start from BAM to the variant calls. You can start from FASTQ to MapAlign and do all your variant calling. And you can also start from a BAM file. You can remap and realign and then you can do all the variant calling. So essentially we have expanded that support and what we've really done is integrate the CNV caller better into this workflow. Previously, the SV and the uh, SMVs were uh, supported well, but now we bring in all the CNV. Uh, a quick uh, review of all the CNV updates. So we have an improved uh, uh, way if you have a tumor normal sample uh, to better detect, uh, you know, uh, purity models. Uh, previously, uh, you know, uh, we, we were uh, not able to do that if the sample had uh, didn't have very large CNVs, uh, and we were not able to correctly detect the purity levels. But now we can use uh, a somatic uh, VAF or a variant allele sequency file when, uh, if you have, and essentially this works for a tumor normal uh, data uh, that you can run together and you can get a better priority model. We have also uh, improved uh, our segmentation for uh, whole exome CNV, uh, leading to better accuracy for uh, uh, you know, large and small events. Uh, we are also able to now get a better coverage metric out of our CNV caller. And what that essentially does is it helps us identify the sample quality and determine whether the sample uh, the, the, the issue is either with analysis or is there an issue inherent in the sequencing or the sample itself? So this helps us to, uh, you know, debug things much faster versus having to doubt whether the problem is on one side or the other. 
We also now have a concept of a disallowed list bed file. So basically, if there are regions uh, that you do not want to call CNDs in, you can uh, provide those regions and just a better visualization, uh, you know, options that we have, uh, you know, uh, enhanced uh, in this uh, release. So just a quick overview. So, you know, if you if you look at the left and the right, the 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 the, the purity is very difficult to detect when the sample is, I would say, clean. Uh, you know, uh, there is no CNV, uh, and uh, you know, is it 100% purity or does it have CNV? But the purity is low, so there's a lot of uncertainty uh, if you don't have a, a variant level frequency file. But for a somatic uh, sample with tumor and normal, uh, when run together, we can take advantage of the SNV uh, WAF file. And what this graph or plot shows you here, if the WAF is at about 30%. Uh, then the purity can be estimated to be about 60% by using this model. So again, this improves resolution, you know, when you have liquid tumors uh, or hyploidy or heterogeneity in the sample, this gives you a better estimate of the purity. Uh, here is an example of, you know, the CNV improvements. So if you look at uh, one of the samples that we took from the Coriel truth set, if you have Dragon 3.6, and if your probes are very sparse, this is the kind of CNV calling uh, that you would get in the previous release. But with 3.7, with the improved segmentation algorithm, uh, we now see the exact uh, CNV call that we would get from the Courier truth set. So this, I think, is a major improvement, and we have seen it in a lot more data sets uh, that we've been able to validate again. So I think if you're running uh, whole exome sequencing data and looking uh, and calling CNVs, I think this release uh, is a major upgrade uh, in that space. Uh, here is just some, uh, you know, comparison against uh, additional Coriel truth sets that we did, and we did replicates. We also compared HiSeq, NovaSeq, four data sets, and, uh, you know, we were just measuring uh, our recall and precision uh, for these, uh, you know, publicly available data sets. So something that if you have on your end, uh, you could uh, validate as well. Uh, this is the, the metric. Uh, plot that I was talking about. So, you know, uh, now with uh, the the metric, uh, the, the coverage metric information that we put in our uh, VCF header file for the CNV, we are able to detect the quality of the sample directly. So you can see some examples where if the, if the, the, the coverage is, you know, 50% or above, we can identify them as poor quality samples. Anything in this green range tells us the quality uh, of the sample coming out of uh, our uh, CNV uh, college. Uh, here is uh, a quick example of the disallowed bed list file, as we said. So it's just a file uh, that you could input if you want to filter out uh, regions. And again, this could be useful in certain regions of the genome that we know are problematic. Either, you know, if you have library threats or sequencing errors or mapping errors, or just you want to have a larger interval where you don't want to, uh, you know, call CNDs, uh, you know, you can provide uh, this interval file to do that. And uh, just, uh, you know, uh, the, the CNV XML file that we now generate can be loaded, uh, you know, directly into IGV to uh, auto-populate these crack files. Okay. Um, on the structural variant caller, uh, you know, just a quick uh, review of what we had. So if you're using a, a GitHub version of the structural variant caller, which is, the, which is Manta, then this is the precision and the recall that you would see at the very bottom of that table, right? Uh, and then we have been continuously improving uh, on that over the past year and a half. And in Dragon, where we are at 3.7, you can see the insertion recall uh, has improved 3x from where it was, uh, or maybe 2.5x from where it was uh, with uh, Manta. So a major improvement uh, in, uh, in the structure variant caller. But the one feature, uh, I'll skip through these slides as we're running a little bit low on time, and you can review, but again, this is just showing you uh, the various, uh, you know, uh, intervals uh, and the improvement in Dragon uh, for all those intervals. But the one major feature I want to highlight in this release is the forced genotyping option in uh, in, uh, in this version. So this this lets you, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, input a VCF file uh, for structural variant calling that you want to force genotype in. And uh, what that essentially gives us is this. So uh, the previous versions of Dragon, and even today, you can use the Dragon in the discovery mode, but now you have the ability to uh, input a VCF file to force genotype in uh, regions that you are interested in. And what that gives us is an integrated uh, improvement when you use both. So you can see 
for an HG002 uh, data set, uh, if you were to use uh, both the options, then we have an improved insertion recall and deletion recall, which we couldn't have if we didn't have genotyping before. So this is something that uh, we feel will be helpful uh, for customers who are running our structure variant car. Um, a quick, uh, you know, uh, update on the methylation. So this is something that has been on our back burner for a very long time. You know, we were uh, doing all the protocols for methylation. We were doing uh, mapping aligning very, very efficiently. But there were these two steps uh, that uh, were still extremely uh, computationally intensive, which we didn't have in our pipeline. And customers were asking uh, for us to include uh, those. So now we have added those. So it's basically the methylation-based sorting and duplicate marking or duplicate removal support. So these two features, if you're running methylation data, uh, you know, this will uh, probably make your uh, pipelines more efficient. So not only now do you get a BAM file, but that BAM file is uh, sorted uh, and uh, duplicate uh, marked if you want. So those options are now available in Dragon, and uh, we hope that uh, you can utilize and benefit from there. Uh, again, we did some various uh, bug improvements in that uh, pipeline. Uh, as well. So uh, previously, in three, before 3.7, we only supported BAM. So today, you can also essentially uh, output uh, a CRAM file uh, if you wanted. Uh, also, uh, you know, in 3.7, prior to 3.7, uh, if we didn't find alignments, we would just uh, go through this and we would not have an, a no alignment failure patch essentially. So in 3.7, uh, we've, we've introduced that, so this will save you runtime, any downstream errors, and then just an improvement in our uh, metrics report uh, in this release. Uh, just a quick overview. So, you know, we've been working on these cohort analysis uh, based, uh, you know, workflows, and we, we haven't fully commercialized this option on a large scale, but if you're running a smaller cohort on your uh, uh, existing, uh, you know, Dragon server, then you will see that there are a number of improvements that we have made. Uh, you know, bug fixes to you know the multi-sample GDCF uh, file from previous version. We have accuracy improvements at multi-allelic sites. So if you look at 3.6 to 3.7, we have observed a gain in indel recall uh, from there. You have the option to remove uh, the non-ref uh, symbol uh, allele, and again, this is really needed for uh, some customers who take our output file and put into other downstream tools, uh, you know, where uh, it doesn't accept the non-ref uh, allele essentially in, in, in their tool. So you have an option to uh, remove that uh, if you want. And then uh, just uh, additional filtering options uh, that can help to improve the uh, FP calling. Okay. Um, as part of this benchmarking uh, that we are trying to do for PubGen initiatives, what I want to point out is uh, recently we announced something with AWS where we reanalyzed uh, all the uh, 1K genome project samples uh, using Dragon. So these are about 3,200 uh, samples at 35X coverage. And we reanalyzed them not only for small variants, but for large variants as well, expansion, everything. So, and you have GVCF files available uh, in a public domain in an S3 bucket. So this is something that we feel the community can benefit of. Uh, so, you know, if you have time and if you feel that there's value for this, uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, read our blog uh, related to that analysis, but also take advantage of the analyzed data that's there. And we are using this uh, to, you know, uh, see what the impacts are on cohort calling and also uh, improve and uh, make our solution for large scale cohort calling more efficient. Okay. And as part of that, uh, you know, we just uh, did a comparison, uh, you know, so uh, of, uh, you know, how the, the joint calling looks against a more widely used GL Nexus uh, based tool. And, uh, you know, what we found out was we added an NA1278 sample to that cohort and we measured the true positives uh, for the input GVCF, which is, you know, just a raw GVCF out of that uh, file. And then when we run the Dragon, uh, GVCF genotyper, uh, is there any impact to it? And then we compared that uh, to GLX. So they, everything uh, lines up pretty well. So something that we wanted to validate against some other tools. Um, just some uh, small improvements that we have done uh, in terms of the BCL conversion. So uh, one of the features uh, that was highly requested out of us was the no lane splitting mode. 
so that option is available. It's an option that you can enable. So, you know, in the past, we have always split for lanes and Dragon can ingest those, but there were some users who wanted everything to be concatenated. Uh, if you're running a very large sample count, then there are high memory requirements that are there, but you can use a BCL convert software option to bring up a, 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 a node in the cloud if you want and run the software. But you can now run extremely high multiplex flow cells uh, more efficiently uh, with this version. And again, as part of our additional support for UMIs, uh, you know, uh, you, you can uh, have options to leave UMIs uh, uh, within the reads uh, and then more compatibility with downstream tools based on, you know, where you uh, put those UMIs, whether in, is, is it index reads or is it in a separate file. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, uh, as we do with all of our uh, software releases, we go ahead and update, uh, you know, the somatic, uh, the, sorry, uh, the, the base space uh, apps related to that. So the, the timeline for uh, the 3.7 updates uh, in base space would be uh, sometime in the first or second week of December. And there will be updates to uh, the Dragon somatic app. So this will become a core app, which means that it has gone through a more thorough validation at Illumina. So that's when we designate it as a core app. So the Dragon somatic app will be designated that. Uh, we will have new uh, app features. So the the graph genome would be available as an option. So if you're running the germline pipeline in base space, you can pick the graph genome option. You don't have to create that by yourself. Uh, there would be a UMI handling in the somatic and the enrichment uh, apps. We also have an updated baseline builder. So what that means is previously, uh, we would build baselines for CMV files. But now you can also build for the uh, noise generation or the, or the, the noise estimation files uh, that you can input. So that's what we call as the SMV uh, baseline files. And then all the 3.7 improvements that we have made on the methylation side, on the joint genotyping, on the RNA uh, would uh, you know, uh, make it into those uh, apps as well. So with that, uh, I'm going to uh, stop. I just have maybe one last uh, comment over here on the general updates is the CentOS 6 support. So if you have older servers that are still running uh, CentOS 6, you have ended support for that in um, uh, October uh, uh, of this uh, year. Uh, and then uh, the Dragon 3.7 is still having a CentOS 6 installer, but that would be the last version. So, uh, you know, uh, 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 recommend everybody to who is still on those older versions to upgrade to 7. Uh, and then uh, this question gets asked of us, will we support eight? Yes, we will support eight, and we will have uh, more information uh, related to that uh, early next year on when uh, a CentOS 8 capable uh, software would be available. So with that in mind, I'm going to stop here. We have a lot more slides that you can then review, and we wanted to put that together because we find that information is going to be useful to all, uh, and then uh, we can take some questions.